Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This week we're discussing Hero Clicks World's news. We're gonna play a little bit of Bad Samaritan and even do ooh ah a new segment, a little bit of a little bit of trivia. So join us in episode 323 of Dial H for Hero Clicks. Howdy howdy, let's get rowdy. <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always in the studio, is my nemesis, Simeon Bruce. What is going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, just smacking and whacking and something bamboozling, you know, the things that rhyme. Okay, Mac the knife. Let's let's slow down. Let's slow I've down. I've been listening there. to All a right. lot of nineties rap lately. I don't know how it goes. Uh, well, I was thinking of uh Butcher Pete, I guess. Not Mac the Knife, Butcher Pete. If you know that song, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Anyways, uh, Simeon's awful taste in music aside, we are joined by special guest Ethan Beck. What's going on, Ethan? Hey, how are you doing, guys? Fan fantastic simeon you don't have to answer that i don't care about your opinion like always we start with what made us happy this week i guess we'll let simeon start here what made you happy this week my man start uh what made me happy this week is i had my first game uh in the the dishing up clicks uh charity event and it was against paris gordon and i was uh i was expecting to get rolled by him he's a previous world champion he knows what he's doing uh, mm. didn't didn't know what he was going to be playing. Kind of kind of expected like some Black Widow action or something. And when we got to playing, uh, the thing that made me happy was he had not the exact same team, but like a very similar build to what I was building. We both basically just built out of the new Fantastic Four set, and it was just hilarious. Okay. It was it was a really fun game. Uh, it was like. I don't know. It's hard when you have like an almost mirror match. It's like, how would I beat my own team? And you're just like, I guess just get lucky. And that's what ended up happening. I rolled like three crit <laughs> hits within like a succession of like eight attacks. There was like three crit hits. And I was like, I guess I just kill things because roll 20 really likes me today. Uh, hopefully my luck doesn't turn, but we'll see. But yeah, it was a fun game. I had a fun chat with him. No, that's about it. This is a bit of a redemption arc for you, isn't it? Yeah, because he beat me uh, in the uh, Kilted Classic uh, right. when I was running WWE, and he was running some Avenger oh. Ghost Rider stuff. Uh, so now, now you're 1-1. One, one. Yeah. 1-1 one, one yeah, right yeah. now, right? Okay, there you go. I like this <laughs> this feud. This is good. This is good stuff. Uh, all right, I'll go ahead and jump into what made me act this week. It's pretty simple. Uh, this week was our opening for the play i am in the musical comedy murders of 1940 and we had three awesome nights which was like thursday was a preview night friday was our big opener where it was packed house saturday packed house uh sunday today whenever you guys listen to it it'll already be over but uh it's already sold out as well so i just i can't wait to get there and act and uh do all that fun stuff i just i love the stage love theater and i'm just glad to be back into it ethan what made you happy this week my man uh not being hero clicks related uh my little cousin has actually started to show interest in uh, D D magic and hero clicks a little bit so i get to finally uh, show someone else in my family uh some of the nerdier hobbies um, that I've been doing for a while. And clicks related, I finally got to play my first in-person game in a very long time. And I was able to use all the new Doctor Dooms I have laying around. <laughs> there you go. I love that. Dude, I love the Doom bots. I love the Doom bots so much. Yeah. I really cannot express how much I freaking love those Doom bots. I really... It was a uh, 800 golden point, and it was a single 300 point starter set Doom, and the rest were Doom bots. Oh, no. I like it. <laughs> That's so many. I like it. Oh, man. So awesome. That's it, awesome. Like, actually, even attack Doom. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, there's a whole right. wall of robots you have to get through. That's cool. No, it's awesome. Let's go ahead, get to know Ethan a little bit better, and jump into the little interview 
segment we're going to do here. So, Ethan, uh, when did you start playing Hero Clicks? What was the set that kind of came out? When, what got you into the game, I guess? Uh, so what got me into the game was I walked into my local LGS and I saw that they had Pacific Rim Hero Clicks. I had no idea what Clicks was, so I bought all of them, naturally. And then uh, a month later, um, I played one game of Golden with Gypsy Danger uh, on top dial and got absolutely obliterated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was uh, a great game. Uh, I played one game of Regenesis um, where I pulled um, one of the chases. I think it was Magic. Yeah, that's a good one. Got completely obliterated. Mm. And then XDPS uh, came out, and that is where I started actually playing Hero Clicks regularly. Uh, I still play my Pacific Rim figures a lot. It's just uh, not um, in lower point games anymore. Yeah, yeah. Pacific Rim. Safe call. They've got a they've got a like a sweet spot where you're doing like a thousand point kind of like really high costed thing where like points don't really matter anymore when you've got enough support and other stuff going on. Oh, uh, exactly, exactly. To tie into that, what are so speaking of like Pacific Rim and stuff, what are some of your favorite pieces or combos of pieces that you like to use? Uh, so there are three that I use all the time. Uh, Age of Ultron, Ultron with Justin Seyfort and Hellion. All right. That Age is, of Ultron had a couple of Ultron, you, so is this? Is uh, this well, six there arm? is a specific. Yeah, six arm. That is the. Okay. Um, he's like parentheses Age of Ultron. Okay, the Age of Ultron. Uh, that is Ultron. Okay. my. Yes, that is. Yep, yeah, sorry about that. Um, but that is he is my go-to tentpole. He has yet to let me down. Uh, another big combo is Cherno Alpha, or and the uh, WWE wrestling ring. Okay. Because you can put him in the middle, make two close range attacks, and then a quake. There you go. So not bad. And then probably my worst combo is uh, TV's Spider-Man from What If and the uh, new um, Captain America Spider-Man. Because the healing from the new Spider-Man triggers TV's Spider-Man's healing factor. And I have just a really good high defense ID call in for Golden Games. There you go. Yeah, I think you might be the first All person right. to ever admit playing that TV Spider Man, uh, but at least it wasn't oh, he's uh, fantastic. TV Daredevil. <laughs> As much TV Daredevil has yet to ever be played by me. I have looked at him long and hard, and then realized I was wasting my time. Fun yeah, that's pretty fair. I, I can't remember which like which one is like thirty points and like one is like seventy points. And you're like, that's not. Mm, I don't know what the point formula was going on here, guys. This ain't it, though, Chief. It's a little rough. Uh, so typically, I, I feel like we already know the answer to this question. But are you more of a meta or casual player? I guess competitive or casual player. I am. I don't own like any meta pieces, sadly. Uh, nothing of the new chases, uh, really. Uh, I play very jank, both in meta and casual. So I'd purely say I'm casual. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, there's some jank teams that like they do one like big trick, and if you can pull it off, they can work in like competitive play. But it's way more fun to like have it work in uh, casual, in my opinion. Uh, like the nightmare. Barbados combo where it's like that's a huge point of your build but giving all monsters a 14 attack is pretty sweet um, yes I have uh, seen that before a few times across from me <laughs> <laughs> so what is your favorite format to play if you can if, if it's like your birthday and your venue is gonna let you pick the format anything you want what's what's your favorite I would have to say uh real golden um talking about like battlefield conditions uh everything just i want to see the oldest and some of the weirdest pieces you can take out and just let them clash 
because, uh, like I've said before, I love playing Pacific Rim, and there is no format that they're good in. But in Real Golden, I can do battlefield conditions, ATAs, pull out a wrestling ring, and some awkward older pieces, and make a team that can stand up to just about anything with enough help. Yeah, that's beautiful. Nice. I really like, I love casual golden. Um, I've seen builds of like competitive golden age where it's like stack resources on like newer players and, or newer figures and stuff and see what they can do. But I love the like casual golden where someone will reach like way back to like a figure that does like some weird interaction and they'll combine it with like some newer figure that WizKids never thought like would be combined or never even cared if it would be combined. And you like pull it off and it's, some cool stuff that happens. Uh, yeah, one piece uh, from way back that I used from Legacy DC is the uh, 001 spoiler for 15 points. He has 9 elite climb and a 16 combat reflexes with 4 long of a dial. That's a tie-up piece. A perfect tie-up piece. All right, and then you want to go ahead and shout out your usual venue? Uh, so, my local venue is the Stadium. It's down here located in Frankenmuth. Uh, they mostly do magic stuff, but the Hero Clicks community is alive and well. Uh, I actually have two other gentlemen that go there. Uh, the judge and one of the owners are actually in your Discord server. Uh, so, we heavily support... Uh. Uh, H over there. Yeah, they're good guys. They're good guys. I know you're talking about. They're good folks. Sounds like it. If they support us, they've got to be good. Of course. Uh, of course. Yeah, shout out to uh, John Carl. Uh, he's the one that, when I first started playing, handed me just piles of hero clicks and said, good uh, man. Hey, John's go good learn. Man. And then shout out to Alex for putting up with my uh, my for way too long. <laughs> for sure uh so if you were to win worlds or maybe you became like an executive at whiz kids and you got to design any one figure what would that figure be what would what would you design to implement in the game and what would it do since god doom has been taken and i can no longer say him uh, i want to crank it up a notch and go uh, i want the ultronic doom which is where uh, Doom basically jacks into Ultron's entire system and takes control of the entire Age of Ultron comic series, where he is the one in charge of everything throughout like time that's Ultron-related. And uh, I would definitely want that just because it's such a ridiculous piece, and I'd want to see what set they put it in. <laughs> Uh, the set being Fantastic Four 2, Electric Boogaloo. That's an ultra <laughs> That was I mean, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. What would be... So now let's say, the flip side, Just Done did one Rock Nationals or quote-unquote Hero Clicks Worlds. Rock Worlds. You won one of those, and you now have the ability to make a map. What kind of map would you make? want a uh, a specific a very specific scene from Pacific Rim which is the very ending where they are around the, the uh, portal in the like in the center Ooh, of the ocean and it's all yeah. underwater I want a completely underwater map that is filled with blocking and it's a section in the middle that if you go in it you take damage I like that Just yeah something ridiculous I like crack in the ocean floor where it's the portal. Yeah, exactly. that's sweet. So this is something, right. this is kind of a tangent thing, but like, I really like those maps. Uh, I think there's only like really one um, where it like flips the map like midway, depending on like what portal you go into. But it works really well on Roll20, like really poorly in real life. Oh yeah, it's terrible. So like, yeah, I think on, in the world of playing online, uh, a map where you could like go through like the the dark dimension thing and end up in like the kaiju realm and you just like swap out the map midway through plane would be pretty sweet and i think a big thing why i'd like it so much it was it would make for a great casual game 
where you can have like different kaiju come through and have multiple players trying to fight them off with lower mm. point teams. Oh yeah, that would be awesome. Not, not enough casual play. <laughs> if Iron Man can build right. Iron Avengers, then the kaiju can make kaiju. I mean, that's just fact. Right, little little kaiju pogs that are kind of like Doctor Demonicus's like stuff, you know, when he oh, yeah, was yeah. spawning exactly. giants. That would be sick. I would like that. All right, so that is our interview. Now we got to know Ethan quite well, I would say. So let's go ahead and jump into news. Simeon, wait, what's in the news this week? Tell me what's in the daily news. Let me know what's in the daily news. Beep, 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 beep. I'm getting this just in from uh, the apparently... I don't Just in. remember what that is. Um, turns out, WizKids Worlds is not happening. Uh, so they, they sent out a questionnaire. They asked you if you were willing to go, how you would go, and then they said, you know what, it's not safe. Never mind. I don't know why we asked you that. Shouldn't have asked. Yeah. Probably could have I- completely just disregarded that whole questionnaire i guarantee questionnaire. their questionnaire was way more on the positive side than it was on the negative side yeah i guarantee more people were um, definitely wanting to yell i like they're just saving uh saving company face right now i with, wonder uh, yeah i wonder like if the internet. questionnaire had any anything that like actually like resolved around this uh announcement like so like yeah. had they gotten only a hundred people they're like yeah we can do a hundred people and they got like 250 people and they're like oh we can't host it 250 people are gonna come uh i don't know if it was like something like that or if they just you know somebody in like upper management of whiz kids uh, all 22 of them if someone was just like hey hey guys there's a pandemic going on. Let's not do it. And they were like, all right, cool. Let's not do it. <laughs> but shortly thereafter, good old Scott Clem company, Crampton, uh, from the, uh, critical clicks podcast. Uh, Ugh. he decided, you know, oh, what? that one. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, the, they put the hard R and here are clicks. Uh, he decided, you, you know what? We all need a Worlds. We deserve it as Heroclix players online in this community this time. We deserve there to be a a Worlds champion every year without question. So he was completely backed by the community. He was like, I'm going to do this. We're going to make this beautiful thing happen. It's going to be 100% community driven. And uh, that was the news uh, for a few days, and then uh, the Realms Open Championship, uh, not to be confused with, uh, you know, the Heroclix Realms Online Championship or anything, anything HC Realms related, they came out and they said, and I quote, Welcome to the 2020 Heroclix Online World Championship, format 300 points modern age. Following ROC rules, including maps, possession of figures and maps are not required for this tournament. Thank you, Scott. For all information, including ticket links, please visit our event page. Structure. This is going to be happening on October 10th, 2020, Saturday at 9 a.m. Central Time. Open World Qualifier with a limit of 120 players. So if you're really interested in this, you better get uh, signed up because there's a cap it's not a it's not a s- small cap there's 120 players so i mean uh four rounds of swiss top 38 will advance to the world championship seems like a small portion but you know it is what it is yeah. uh this number may increase if slots are open for more players so if people that are pre-qualified decide not to play uh more of the people that qualify later will get to play and then uh, the number may decrease if attendance is lower than 120 players. Whatever that means. Um, mm-hmm. Then later that same day, 10, 10, October 10th, uh, Saturday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, World Championship Final Swiss Rounds with a limit of 64 players consisting of players that earned buys or advanced through the Open World Qualifier. So... 
basically, uh, there's going to be a couple of ways, and I'll, I'll list those real quick. Uh, 2019 World Champion Singles, and then three <laughs> slots for the world-winning team. So whoever won the 2019 World Champion teams, I can't remember. Um, that would be Adam Friedman, um, Matt Rush, Daddy G, uh, and then whoever their teammate was. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I feel really Michael, bad. <laughs> Micah? Micah Love? Uh, I don't know. No, uh, he is not. The, the last teammate was also a member of the uh, Firebird um, cage place. Oh, the, the whatever. Sonic they have the Pest <laughs> team. Uh, yeah, the they're the ones with the, the jerseys that look awful. Um, <laughs> can't remember. <laughs> also pre-qualified so, is the ROC yeah. Nationals champ. The 2019, oh, 2019 ROC Nationals champ. The 2019 ROC Nationals champ team, all three of the people from the... Now, I do team. know the people on that team. That was uh, executive producer Lucas Van Holland, Isaac Denke. Uh, maybe I don't know all the people on that team. Never mind. <laughs> Take it back. That's fine. But it was That's those fine. two yeah. for sure. Uh, oh, Wes. One of the Wes's. Uh, I don't remember which Wes. West, it was, Summers, it was a Wes. Uh, Initially, yes. That next was. up is the the 2020 ROC Nationals singles first. So this is going to be the one that's going to be held in a uh, I can't remember August, um, mid August. So this is yet to be determined. Whoever wins singles first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. So putting higher priority on a nationals than a previous worlds, which is great. Good. Good. Uh, whoever places in the top eight of national singles will get a bye into the finals. Um, and then the 2020 ROC nationals teams, whoever gets whoever's team gets first and whoever's team gets second, which I, I feel is fair. I feel first and second for teams is fair. Uh, yeah. Of course, yeah. only applying to ROC 2020 nationals. And then uh, week one qualifier, week two qualifier, three and four qualifier, which I assume is going to be some sort of smaller tournament prior to this event. So those will all be pre-qualified for the event happening on Saturday. The sixty; Those will be part of the 64 players that are in the final. Um, and then on Sunday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, World Championship Finals single elimination. So if you're out, you're out. There will be five rounds of single elimination with earned buys. Uh, so that's about it for that. The cost is all participants, including those that have buys. So even if you are one of the people I listed that have won something, you get to pay an entry fee of $25. Those entering the world qualifier on 10 10 20 will pay when they register online. So even if you don't end up getting into the final thing, you're going to have to pay $25. Uh, players with buys will be given a link to make payment. And then pricing is subject to change. First place, $250 st 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 door credit to mm. Lucky Dice Cafe or Lucky Dice Cafe eBay store. Mm. Uh, no exit. Wow. Yeah. No exit allowed. Sorry, folks. That's only 250 on the uh, the Huntsville, Alabama Lucky Dice Cafe. Buy $250 worth of hot dogs or wings or shakes or sandwiches. If you don't have wings, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, buy 250 bucks for the hot dogs. That's a lot. I want to watch. I want to watch. I want to watch Howard cook each one. It's a lot of hot dog, Calder. That's what I want for my uh, wins. <laughs> first place will also win an ROC map and the ability to design a map, which is kind of cool. Uh, second place, two hundred dollars store credit and an ROC map. Third and fourth, one hundred and fifty dollars store credit ROC map. Fifth to eighth, hundred dollars store credit with an ROC map, and ninth to sixteenth. So the top 16 are going to get $75 store credit ROC map. And if you break the top half of the top half that's qualified, so this is the top quarter of qualified people, you will get $50 store credit. So 
I don't know if this is cumulative. doesn't say one way or another. I would hope so, but probably not, because uh, I assume they would have said so. Um, but yeah, thoughts, opinions. Calder, what do you what do you think? Um, It is a online Hero Clicks tournament that I will uh, also not be competing in. I don't have anything going on that weekend. I just don't want to. Uh, no, but I just... I will honestly, I will say this. All those words meant nothing for like a minute there. Those are all like filler words. Anyways, I think it's pretty cool. I, I liked Scott's get up and go right away for the fact that we didn't have a championship. And he was like, I want to do something. It's been a bad year, you know, generically, like for the world, generic bad year. I don't know what you're actually going through. If you're going through something, hit up the Dial H page. I'll, uh, I'll talk with you, bud. I will, or Simeon will, I don't know. Anyways, he was like, you know, let's let's run a world tournament. Let's have some fun. We deserve to have some fun. To me, um, 300 Modern isn't fun, so it's it's just kind of just like another tournament type of deal. When I go to Worlds or any tournament, I, I really just am there for teams, and I'm there for Battle Royales, and then I might make a showing in singles if I feel like it. I've been qualified several years in the past, and I didn't play because I didn't feel like it. So that's just the way it is. But no, it's cool. I'm. I wish it would have instead probably. I probably wish it would have just been all Scott and then him and then maybe some donations from other people to try to like make it big. I know if Scott would have been running it by himself, I would have probably. You know, I'm not. You know, the Monopoly man or anything. I'm not even the Pringles man. I'm not. I don't have much to offer, but I would still offer something for prize in terms of prizing. Um, and then Howard went ahead, took the reins uh, from Scott's hands, got on the horse, and led it, you know, to uh, to different waters. We'll say I yeah. think it's the nicest way for me to put it. And uh, I no longer have water, but you can't make it pay twenty five dollars to enter. Yeah, I don't. I just yeah, I, I'm not about that life. Um, I I was actually before. I was thinking of maybe like figuring out a team, you know, when Spider-Man comes out, mess with some of the figures we've seen there, whatever, and like really practice it up really well, try to get qualified for it. Um, was the, the qualifier costs money, right? Yeah. I'm reading into it wrong. Yeah. yeah. So like uh, now, the, now the qualifier, qualifier costs like, money too. I'm just not about that life. I I'm not about that life. The pre-qualifiers qualifier of which they say is going to be, there's going to be four of them. I assume those are going to be winner maps. So like five to ten dollars, depending uh, on. That's not terrible. If it is five ten bucks, I still might go for it, just to um, or hero clicks play under my belt. But uh, three hundred modern does not interest me at all. Hate hate to be a, a bummer, but um, I'm glad it's happening. I just won't. I probably won't play. Yeah, should have should have shortened that a bit. I I just feel as though it's gonna lack the uh, like such a large tournament. Which is really why I would go to one is because I'm not there just to play Heroclix. There's an atmosphere about it where I'm able to get in casual games. I'm able to talk to people I haven't met before. And this will just really lack that entire environment a lot. Yeah. I agree. And that's fair for most online play. Um, most online tournaments, the way they run, I will give them kudos to running a full tournament and basically two days which is hard to do it's going to be a real yeah. rough go for them and for all the judges involved getting everything going and keeping time uh you will have to dedicate pretty much your entire saturday if you if you want to qualify and then also you're planning on like being one of the top 32 that advance you'll have yeah, to right. pretty much guarantee your entire saturday is going to be you know, from from 9 a.m. Central Standard until probably, I don't know, I'd be willing to say like 10 p.m. Central Standard, you're probably going to be playing. Um, and I do appreciate that it's going to be done in like two days, so I can just, you know, tell folks like, hey, I'm busy this day. And then I don't have to worry about trying to make time like, you know, within the week t for each game. Uh, but yeah, it is disappointing in the aspect that like actual worlds you've got con exclusives to buy you've got battle royales to play you've got side events you've got places to go things to see uh take the elvis tour eat some uh good old 
chicken peanut butter spicy. peanut butter banana sandwich fried and bacon grease yeah. three mama made it uh-huh oh baby yeah now calder is banned from staying at the uh, hotel that is correct <laughs> that is correct that was the rules wasn't it i'm banned yeah now. you're not allowed to do elvis impressions while at hero hero clicks worlds so i assume since this is online elvis That's impressions so allowed uh so i would say so that might be a kicker to get me to play yeah the fact go, that elder impressions are allowed you gotta get to work to make you into a you know uh a man who got <laughs> man wow yeah, the thanks Mulan song Appreciate is what's playing in my head uh oh, okay okay swift as all the, right is there anything screen. else you want to talk about worlds related or can we not that was everything for the news so from these kids banning it five days ago saying like we're not doing it until yeah, yeah. today where we got the ROC news. That's all that's happened this week. Not a whole lot going on this week. Good. That's what I like. That's what I like to hear because you know what that means? You get to play a little game that's been sweeping sweeping the nation. Sweeping the nation for, for close to seven years now. A little bit of a uh, little bit of bad Samaritan. All right. So, like always, this is the first time listening to a podcast of Bad Samaritan. I have chosen three figures. Each round, they will get clues as to which figure it could be. And then Ethan and Simeon will take turns guessing. They each get one guess each round. So I'll choose a figure. First round, they'll get a clue. They'll get a guess each. And it'll be three rounds. Don't get the figure. They don't figure out who it is at the end of three rounds. I'll get the point. If Simeon or Ethan guess it at any point in time, Simeon or Ethan will get a point. That's the same thing for all three figures. If we somehow have a three-way tie, the tiebreak around will be an object that is used in the game. And then we will do a tiebreak around to see who wins this round of Bad Samaritan. So Simeon has a random number generator. I have clues 1 through 20. I'm going to give you guys a minute and 30 seconds on the clock each round to guess who the figure is going to be. Just a reminder that those playing at home, no uh, use of clicks Nexus or HC realms allowed. That's correct. Your own noggin. That's right. You can pull information. Right. So with that, I'm I'm currently staring along. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) First clue is going to be number 13. Number 13 is going to be opening movement power. Guys, guess what? Character as charge as their opening movement power. Solid, wow, that really narrows it power. down, doesn't Isn't it? That great. You have a minute and thirty seconds to get your guesses in. <laughs> oh, we're timed now. Uh, timed now. That's right. Darn right you are. Since it's modern, and well, I know that uh, it's the, modern. The that best is correct. That he he does at what he does. Uh, I think Wolverine charges a lot, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mm. say Wolverine. Okay, vote for Wolverine. Uh, I think it's clock and the best charger right now in modern is Juggernaut. Okay, yeah. Okay. A little little brotherhood, little X Men. A vote for Juggernaut. A vote for Wolverine is going to be neither of those. Simeon, give me another clue. How about you give me another clue? Uh, it's going to be clue no, ten. That's not how this works. Clue ten is going to be name of a special power character. Doesn't have any special powers. Uh, you have a minute and thirty seconds. How did I know you? Oh, he's vanilla. Uh, yeah, so it's a generic uh, chargey guy. I'm gonna go with Assassin's Guild because he has a trait and no special powers. Um, hmm. I'm sure there's another chargey dude with no special. I mean, does the new Gorgon? He has a trait with no special powers. Uh, no, I think his charge is special. I don't know. There's there's plenty of people with uh, charge I, no special. Um it doesn't it works off of it. Can it be one of their top dials? I know Friends of Humanity has a uh, charge. They will always um, start on their number one click. Uh, unless, oh, they are okay. a, unless they are a vampire, in which case it'll be their quote unquote starting click, but it'll always be their number one, except for vampires. 30 seconds uh, left. Oh, Jesus. Uh, 
He's a pretty cool guy. I don't. I'm gonna go with Beast. Okay. okay. One for Assassin's either. Guild. One for Beast. It is gonna be neither of those. Final clue of figure number one. Final clue is gonna seal the deal for us. It's number twenty. Ah, Razmataz. Number twenty is you get any two clues for free. So, uh, clues sixteen through one, you don't get to choose free plays for your for your for your clues or anything. But you get you get to choose any two clues. So, Simeon, go ahead and you get to choose, clue get to choose two. Clues. So you get to choose one clue. You don't get to choose twenty again. You don't get to keep choosing I wish more for clues. More wishes. That's not how it works. I'm sorry. Not at all how it works. Stimian, you will get to choose a clue, and then Ethan can choose a clue, and I can read them all out if you guys need me to. Uh, I'm locked in with what I want. I'm going to I'm gonna do set. You go really, set? Okay. Really locked in with for set me. for Simeon. And then you also get a clue. Uh, I would like keyword. Keyword. Generic or named keyword? Uh, generic. Generic. This character is a soldier, and the set is Fantastic Four. Ooh. Ooh. Fantastic Four I... soldier. Ooh. I've been looking I'm at the Fantastic Four a lot. Think so of... a lot. Um... Soldier, soldier, soldier. Ooh, that is... I'm going to say scroll warrior cuz he's got charge um man i i have not looked at fantasy for a lot to be honest i think okay. gorgon might have soldier um I have a minute left let's see gorgon might have it uh, Triton might have it, but I think I he's think, got special speed. I think Gorgon has. Oh no, Gorgon is a. I think that's a trait. I believe that's a trait. Is quake. Um, I'm going to say seconds. on the clock. Red Hulk. Red Hulk locked okay. in. Simeon, yeah. what was your guess? Well, clearly it wasn't the right one since you had to ask. I mean. 20, 20, no, I just forgot. I guess Leave me alone. Scroll Warrior. <laughs> scroll Warrior and Red Hulk. It is going to be neither of those popping home. The first point is going to be me. You guys said it about a million times, but never locked it in. It is 046, a rare Gorgon Stomper or whatever his surname may yeah. be. Yeah. Goat Man. Yeah. Goat Man. The Hooves. <laughs> All right, that is round one. Round number two, figure number two. Well, round one, figure number two. Simeon, give us a clue. See if you guys can uh, redeem yourselves a little bit here. We're going to go with clue number five. Ooh, clue number five is going to be rarity and set number. This character is an uncommon. With set number 22, you have a minute and 30 seconds. Okay, 22, and it's an uncommon. This is going to be a bigger set. Uh, doesn't really help. I'm going to say Iron Man, because mm. honestly, I don't remember any number 22s. Then none of them stick out to me right now. Um, hmm. He says it was, a, it was an uh, uncom uncommon. Nova. <laughs> Is that... Nova. Okay, so we're locked in with Nova and Iron Man. It is going to be at 45 seconds left on the clock, by the way. Ethan with the point. Oh, oh wow, really? Dang. Yeah, look at that. Right off the press. Yeah. I, oh, I only guessed because I have a bunch of random Fantastic Four on my desk. I'm like, oh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> There you go. I'm sorry. That's uh, that's cheating. I need you to uh, <laughs> knock everything off your desk right now. Oh, oh, that is a lot of hero clicks, sir. Yeah, that is a I'm lot of to, hero I'm clicks. Ask you to uh, just shove it all off. I won't reimburse you. Um, but for the remainder of the game, all right. Well, now we're already on to figure number three. So, right. Simeon, give us a clue. Figure number three, round one. 
first clue is going to be number two. Ooh, number two is point value. This character is 30 points. 30 points, you said? 30 points, 30 or points. 30 points, however you want to say it. 30, uh, 30 points. Just because I've played it quite recently, I'm going to say Valeria Von Doom, even though there's probably mm. a lot of other... I mean, I know there's a lot of other 30-point options, but that's the one I'm going to go with. One locked in with Valeria Von Doom. Ooh, uh, I'm going to say the Fantastic Four Punisher. One locked in for the Punisher. Yeah, he's wrapped that up in a nice tight 30 seconds. It is going to be neither of those. Figure three, round two, or clue two. Second clue is going to be number six. Ooh, number six is named keyword. This character is a member of the Justice League. Ooh, 30 point Justice okay. League. Now uh, I really don't know what I'm talking <clears throat> about. I'm trying to think because uh, 30 points has to be their top line. So like they're no more. They like they don't have a higher point line than 30. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking uh speedy is like 40 or something maybe he's yeah 30. Uh, uh the only one Black on top of my head is uh the the crimson avenger crimson avenger the okay. prime i'm gonna say black canary because i truly do not have a clue on that one locked in black canary ethan you're locked in with the crimson avenger is that right yep yes yeah, sir all right it is gonna be Round number three. We need a third clue here, guys, because it's neither of those. All right. Uh, last clue for the last figure, number 16. Number 16 is going to be opening damage power. This character has Outwit. All right. 30-point Outwit cool. Justice League. Uh, that makes mm. me want to say, like, Batman, but I can't think of a 30-point Batman. Um Oh gosh! Um, the starter sets don't go below fifty points. No, I don't think there's any thirty uh, starting there's, line. I think there's a flash that's like thirty-five or forty. It's gonna have to be has a, like the Lex Luthor counterpart. Oh yeah. Um, I uh, I don't think he's quite as cheap as thirty. I'm thinking something I, like I'm, Amanda Waller or like some of the one of those like support uh, kind of people. Um, yeah, that's. Let's there's see. a. I'm gonna say the Flash because I think because I don't know this set at all, and the Flash is like the cheapest Justice League that just comes to my mind. I'm gonna say Flash. Okay, locked in for the Flash. See me in ten seconds. Uh, I want to say that's Eight, from Rebirth. Ten, six, five, four. I'm three, gonna say. Two. Veronica Kale. No, that's not right. Oh, Veronica I know Kale I'm locked in. Veronica Kale. That was uh, what you said. Uh, and the timer. Outwit, Thank you. I don't think it's. I think it's a special outwit. Yes, great. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're already. We're already. This is where we're at. Yeah. All right. Go, you guys want to know? <laughs> yes, uh, I got it. Go. Veronica Kale is yep. gonna be Ethan with the win. Come on with two points with the flash oh, and the Gordon. He, wait, he really does? He really has 30 points? <laughs> I thought he was like 40. Or you can add plus 10. The uh, great brain. Oh, so, yeah, because I was thinking because he had the Lex Luthor because he has Luthor's, like, powers. So, okay. Jeez, okay. I'll, that's what, yeah, I'll that's what messed I thought. me up. Okay. Um, <laughs> so... It is Lex Luthor, so he does have, like, Injustice League and Justice League, right? Yes, that is correct. I think uh, so. I think that's so. That's probably, yeah. I was honestly, if or not, I should give you uh, Injustice League or Justice League as a keyword, honestly. It wasn't going to be Speedster, yeah. that's for sure. But, uh, <laughs> job. I wouldn't have All right, so this is, uh, yeah, congratulations to Ethan this week's bad sam champion uh, and simeon going home uh the poor man with no points this week mm. real sad poor one out mm. oh, man simeon. it's okay now moving on to a new segment i i thought this was pretty fun i've been listening to other podcasts that do this every week we are gonna do kind of a, a little bad samaritan-esque type deal but this is going to be trivia now ethan has already agreed to be our contestant for this week's trivia he gets choice though 
Uh, really quickly, actually, before we get into it, there are going to be six questions for whichever trivia, trivia blah, blah, category he chooses. Each question he gets correctly, he will get a Dial H action token. As soon as he gets two questions wrong, he's out and can no longer answer any more questions. All right. Keep going. He gets one wrong. As soon as you get two wrong, you're out. No three strikes. Two strikes, you're out, man. But fear not, he does get one lifeline in the, uh, I don't know, helping hand, I guess, of my co-host, Simeon Bruce. So yeah, at any yeah. point in time, he can he can go, uh, lifeline, I don't know it. And then it's up to Simeon to Who answer the question for Ethan. Ethan not know will still get, Ethan will get the token for that question, uh, even if Simeon gets it right. That is his lifeline. You have six questions. Ethan, you can choose between Hero Clicks Trivia or Dial H Trivia. HeroClix land. Today's contestants are a business intelligence consultant from Casca, Minnesota. I think right. I know more offense, but I think I know a little bit more about that than the podcast. <laughs> Cut it steep. Hurts a lot. All right. We're going to go with super generic HeroClix trivia. What was the first HeroClix set with chases? Uh, I think it's Supernova because that's the set you keep opening. You're chasing those zombies. It is Supernova. That is correct. Ethan gets one token and moves on to question. And that's some Dial H trivia trivia too. uh, Yeah, that's right. Some beautiful howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy tokens. All right. Name the very first Heroclix set. Oh, God. Actually, uh, the judge at the States I went to had it with him so it was infinity challenge that is correct it is infinity challenge uh, all right now first ever now very popular for whiz kids here is to make movie sets we've got black widow captain marvel all these great movie sets what was the first movie set ever made oh no <laughs> oh no um This, I have no idea. Movie set. They... The earliest movie set I can think of, because I don't want to use a lifeline yet. The earliest movie set I can think of is... I think Green Lantern. I think it was uh, Watchmen. Because it had, yeah, I think it was Watchmen. Was was it was the movie out then? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Watchmen. <laughs> I think it was Watchmen. Okay, locked in for Watchmen. All right. Yes. It is. Because yeah. uh, my my judge collects his Watchmen, and I know that's a movie. And I know it's like an older thing, so I don't know. If, uh, even, I don't think it might just be a Watchmen set. It is the Watchmen. You are correct. Really. Yep, I was thinking oh, wow. that maybe, uh, it was Jonah Hex. I forgot whether or not it was Jonah was if Jonah Hex was actually based off the movie or not. I don't think it was. Uh, so yes, it is Watchmen. Right. Wow. Those. Okay. Those because they are all based off the movie. Okay. Yeah, it was a flip of a coin for me for that on that one. The next would have been what Green Lantern, and then uh, Green Green Lantern. Yeah. When was uh, the Avengers oh, movie Avengers. set? The Avengers. The Avengers was 2012. Okay, so, yeah. so yeah. All right. Three questions in. Doing great. They, they are going to get harder. They're going to get harder. What was the All first right. set dials on the back of the card? Oh, um, they're dials on the back of their card. Was it? Hmm. This I don't know. I'm going to use my lifeline for Simeon on this one. The Simeon lifeline. Oh, I wish you... Because I've you only wouldn't. played with on the back. Uh, I'm 90% <laughs> sure it's Superior Foes of Spider-Man. But it could have been the summer OP from before that. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Superior Foes. Not 100%. So 
don't get mad at me if I'm wrong. No, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna go Superior Foes of Spider Man. Uh, okay. Actually, the first time we ever saw a figure with a dial on the back of its card was set number 001 Wolverine from the Uncanny X Men set. Oh, okay. I would have not known that. Oh, I'm just kidding. The first full set was Superior Foes of Spider Man, but. Oh, First figure we did see with I was dial. like, I have a that dial. Whole, I have the whole the Uncanny X Men set. I was gonna be terrified oh, if that was real. But with the but the first character we did see with the dial on the back of the card was that Wolverine. Fun fact. Okay. Fun fact. All right, you're up to four tokens here. You used your lifeline. You got, okay. uh, you got two. Yeah, two questions left. All right. Fantastic Four are back. But when was the last time all four of them? I'm talking Johnny Reed, Sue, and uh, Ben were in a Hero Clicks set together. Ooh, that's a tough okay. one. Because I know. I wouldn't even know that off the Two of them have randomly shown up. Um, this is stuff that. A little newer, so I wouldn't quite know. Um, I think. When. I don't even know when the last Fantastic Four set was. Um, yeah, it's been a bit chaotic. I'm, Honestly, it's I'm, a bit chaotic. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it was 10th anniversary. Because I know the things in there. They have that thing. But that's all I know, and I have not looked through a yeah. set ever. Locked so I'm gonna in go with ten, Marvel tenth anniversary. This is not Marvel tenth anniversary. The only F four figure was the thing of the four I named. Okay. Uh, Storm and Spider Man did have the Fantastic Four keyword. Oh, no, the last set all four members of the Fantastic Four were in was Secret Invasion. Oh, okay. There is a newer the in the last version of the Human Torch we ever got before now was in the Captain America set when he was with Sue, and then a couple of them made it into Chaos War and a few other places. But the last time we got them was so I was thinking Chaos War. Yeah. So I know we got uh, right. Uh, this is Mr. fantastic. And final War. question: You're, You got you got four tokens, which is pretty good. Pretty darn good, I, I must say. Last question is the hardest one, uh, as it should be. Questions ought to get harder. Name the first character, the pirate keyword. Now, the pirate keyword is a relatively new keyword. It didn't it didn't exist before cards, so I'll let you know that it's at least on a carded figure. The very first character that ever got the pirate keyword. Pirate keyword. Pirate key. All I can think of. Is Pirate Deadpool, um, first ever. The oldest figure I have. Do not, I, do not I, have to name like set number either. Just you can just say their name. Okay, that makes it a little easier. Um, don't think that was. Oh gosh, um, the first ever. I th I own this figure, so that's why I'm gonna say it. because uh, cause I think he has it. Cause I own uh Deathstroke. Ooh, going with Deathstroke it is not Deathstroke. So that is two strikes you're out, but that was the last question anyways. So you got your four tokens. Congratulations. It is actually 004 from the Captain America the Winter Soldier set, Batrock. Batrock. Oh, Batrock. Okay. That, yeah. Okay. I know what Jess Stroke you're thinking of though from the uh the Flashpoint series. because uh, he was a pretty sweet figure. But yeah, that yeah, was one of the that was awesome one of the first sculpt. ones I had. <laughs> yeah. One of the first super rares I owned. Too. Okay. Yeah, because he had such a cool sculpt if I picked him up. <laughs> Oh, Ethan, good job. You got yourself four tokens. Those can be 
Uh, Dial H, Hattie Hattie, let's get Rowdy tokens. They can be uh, Lex Luthor cake tokens that we also make, which look real swell, if I do say so myself. And then also we have uh, HBK, uh, tuning up the band tokens. You can choose any of those. We'll get you contacted after the show. I think I have your address since you're a uh, great member of the Patreon. So we'll be able to ship those out for you here soon. Before we let you go, is there anything you want to plug before we jump on over to community? Uh, yeah. So uh, recently I started a YouTube channel uh, making videos that are actually primarily about Golden Age as there isn't a lot of uh, videos being done on Golden Age. Uh, it's focusing on kind of more obscure pieces that aren't quite used as much or brought up as much and it's also focused on budget pieces, uh, pieces that you don't get a lot of money to get your hands on but still hold up relatively well. Mm. I just did my recent video on the uh, Commissioner Gordon from Batman and the Man series, because uh, he is just one of the best utility pieces ever, I think, <laughs> personally. Uh, so it it's called uh, Down Grave Zombie, uh, all in word. And uh, yeah, you can find me on YouTube. I don't have any Facebook or anything, so you won't be able to find me there. Okay, so Down Grave Zombie, Down Grave Zombie on YouTube. We'll go ahead. We'll link that in the show notes. Uh, so thank you so much for being on this episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks. Really appreciate it, my man. And Well, thank you for having me on, guys. Yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah, bye. And making sure Calder yeah, didn't yeah. win. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, guys. See ya. Bye. All right, Simeon, let's go ahead, finish off, let's jump into community. There are dozens of us. Community Tuesdays, we go ahead. We ask you guys a quick little question: of What's been uh, what's been going on in the week? And I guess this is actually sort of sort of news, but we kind of talked about it here anyway. So the question was Community Tuesdays question: Windows and door, window and door terrain is potentially leaving the game. Will you miss it? Did you find it difficult to understand, or was it unnecessary in the first place? Simeon, windows and doors, going. Yeah. How do you feel? How do you I mean, feel? You know, I, I always have a hard time when I'm leaving my house. I'm like. Ah, do I go out the window or the door? You know, I can see out the window. I can't see through the door. Wish I could just see and leave through the same exit. But, uh, yeah, it's been a difficult difficult life for me. With the, see this, why uh, that's hard for problem. you to understand. Yeah. Understand. So, uh, yeah, Windows, I mean, it's a game. So you have to keep this in mind. It's not the real world. It doesn't work like real world stuff. Uh, Spider-Man can't leap climb through a window. But windows work like, you know, you have line of fire. Do you have a power that works around line of fire? If you do, then, like, you know, you can use that window for that as if it's uh, not blocking. Uh, but for movement, that window is closed. So no power that can go through that, you know, except like phasing, uh, breakthrough blocking, ignore blocking, whatever. And then doors are the exact opposite. You can move through them freely, but you can't shoot through them because it's a solid wall until you open it. Did you say that if I were standing on one side of the door and you were on the other side of the door, you couldn't punch me because well, you can't punch through walls. Is that correct, Simeon? Yeah. Even though I'm we are right strong, next to each other. Yeah. I, I could yeah. punch the door until the door broke. I could certainly that, can do that. You know, Absolutely. If I, if I had three damage or I was holding an object. And then, and, uh, and then once the door broke, you could obviously you could punch me for yeah, sure. Then there's just no door. So uh, it's just no free go. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I think that, I think that <laughs> got our thoughts yeah, that's, out of it pretty much. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Uh, yeah. Let's go. I would say really quickly, I think too much of a good thing is a bad thing. I think these are good things, but I think maybe the reason the confusion started is because of maps like ancient hold um that uh or maybe just too much of a good thing i think the x-men museum map thing. is probably worse that museum map uh, the, i can see all that. the windows well, i i literally looked at that map too and been like i kind of don't want to play on it honestly yeah it it doesn't mess up your line of fire but it really like messes up uh like flyers people that yeah. have improved movement stuff like that uh, okay so we'll yeah, go, go ahead to, that's uh, all i wanted to say yeah First on Facebook is Loyal Miller saying, I feel they could have used them more and added some special features to them, 
like uh, minus one to damage if shooting through a glass window, but characters adjacent to the window take a click of reducible damage to mimic glass shattering when you shoot it with a bullet. Maybe have some have given some characters special powers that interacted with them as well. It would have forced people to learn. Instead, they wanted to dumb down the game by just getting rid of them. Um, so yeah, I agree to an extent. Uh, I don't like water terrain. Really doesn't do a whole lot unless you have a specific combat symbol. Otherwise, it's just worse hindering terrain, in my opinion. Um, and just like hindering terrain has obscuring terrain and water terrain, uh, blocking had doors and windows. And I think it's just alternate types of like the same type. And as long as you have a good grasp on the main type, you can kind of grasp the subset. Like water uh, reduces your movement speed or stops you just like hindering would unless you have improved hindering. And obscuring doesn't stop your movement at all, but does obscure your line of fire. Um, so with that in mind, I don't, I don't think they could have. I don't think it would have been smart to increase what the terrain did, uh, like having windows shatter. That would have raised a lot of questions with drawing line of fire through like multiple panes of glass and stuff like that. And I wouldn't really prefer that to be honest. I'd rather it just be the way it is, but. I do agree that it wasn't uh, too hard to grasp. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and read. Let's just do one each. I hope you read the one you thought was the coolest on Facebook. I I'm did just gonna go ahead. not. Right. Uh, maybe. Oh, uh, well. Some that sucks for you. Perhaps. Huh? Yes. All right. Uh, I'll go ahead. Read one on the old, uh, the old Twitter here. Windows by Bonsai Tree and Sapling. Vigilante Bonsai Tree and Sapling. <laughs> Windows are a bit confusing, but doors are simple. I'll miss them. They go away. It's always interesting to have new terrain types, and these ones are relatively simple remixes of existing concepts. Awesome. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're talking about doors and windows quite a bit, because the Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. Is a uh, is hot topic about doors and windows. Really simple. They play like walls, except you can't through, move through them. All right. You can draw a line of fire through a window. Don't fret the laws of physics. It's only a game. Don't let them take our doors and windows. Pretty cool. And uh, don't forget, go go open your uh, open your rule book there and check out all the rules for doors and windows. They're not. They're really not that difficult to understand. And uh, I'm gonna miss them. Miss them a little bit. I didn't play with a lot of windows, honestly. Played uh, with quite a few doors though. Yeah. A few the doors one thing the I didn't really care about doors was uh, if someone was on like the opposite side due to like the way uh, adjacency works, you wouldn't be able to, like you're not adjacent when one person's on one side of the door, another person's on the other side. But if you tried to move through the door, you'd have to have like improved movement through characters to be able to go past them and stuff. Which isn't too bad, but it's a little annoying uh, the way it worked out. Allowed people to kind of like funnel people through like separate directions and stuff. Right on. We have a, uh, a a block, baby. What kind of block? A Malcolm Rush question block. Let's get into it. That's in Japan. Japan? No, 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 no. I can't go to Japan. When HeroClick started, there was no sideline. Over the years, by the way, there was no sideline for a very short amount of time when HeroClick started. Uh, over over the years, uh, sideline became a very important part of the game. So, Simeon, we got best, worst, favorite elements and mechanics that involve the sideline. It's question number one. So, you go best, I'll go best, you go worst, I do worst, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Go for it. All right. I said best was, and this is objectively best, uh, ID yeah. cards and possessors and trouble arts. Also, I'd throw oh, one uh, guard yeah. sideline in there, even though it's only one figure. Three things, huh? Yeah. I mean, okay. it's hard to decide because they all do different but similar stuff. Dope. So, check this out. I, I only chose one of those. I think, personally, it is the trouble alert. Not maker, just trouble alert. Only because of the existence of Black Vulcan being a thing and autonomous being a thing helps it out a lot as well so stuff like that um yeah it costs zero points to put on your build you can have up to nine of the same character on your sideline if you want if you want nine black vulcans on your sideline hey man go for it 
go for it. So I, I really think that trouble alerts uh, and what they can do for free uh, and potentially being able to swing a game, absolutely. It is, also, is gnarly. like the way trouble alerts work, it helps if you're like just missing a lot of attacks. So if you, it actually is kind of good if you have like a team with no prob or perplex and you're just like swinging and missing co- like constantly. Um, yeah. Exactly. So I think um, it rewards you for having bad luck. And um, yeah, it's very solid. Now, obviously, yeah, whatever. Never mind. Worst, Simeon. Uh, worst, I put, just objectively speaking, uh, shifting focus. Um, hmm. They really haven't rolled out a ton of, in my opinion, they haven't rolled out any like meta shifting focus. There's a ton of great casual stuff. Doctor Strange being one of my favorites. Uh, the new Iron Man are like pretty good. The Captain America ones were pretty solid. I never played with the Batman and Superman ones. I assume they were okay. And then mm-hmm. all the Black Widow ones. And uh, I guess Elektra also happened. Um, but yeah, there's, nice. there's just a lot to Some choose. Reason. All people, Elektra twice, though. <laughs> Elektra. Really, though? Yeah. Elektra? Elektra? Nice. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I, I actually just said uh, shifting focus Electra with a little times two <laughs> next to it. That's why I kind of went off yeah. a little tangent there. I just don't get why she needed to be twice. Sorry. Or maybe I don't have the heart on at the WizKids office for Electra like somebody else does, but uh, I don't care. I do not care. <laughs> um, anyways, I just don't care about Electra. I cannot tell you. I cannot express it enough. All right, favorite, favorite sideline mechanic. So my favorite is actually shifting focus. Um, I really Ah. like how the mechanic works. Uh, And this isn't like the early editions of shifting focus where like Ant-Man had to be given a move action to turn into giant man or different Ant-Man or whatever. Um, But I really like the aspect of having like a 500 or like, you know, 500 to 300 point character, except they're split into multiple versions. So it's like, do I need to be in defensive mode? Do I need to be in an attack mode? Maybe I'm a taxi. Maybe I'm a utility piece for a turn, like whatever. I really like that aspect. I think sometimes they get it right. Um, it's to my knowledge, they have yet to make like a broken, like a truly broken one. Um, it also worked really cool with the Punisher and the dad bod Spider-Man from earth X where you could yeah. yank up knife Punisher and then swap him into uh the good old machine or uh, missile launcher punisher and blow people up. Um, and then to tack onto that is the new fantastic four uh, form, the new fantastic four trait, AKA Sue's wife swap ability. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can with like the crazy amount of new fantastic four pieces. It's actually like a really good utility to swap in or out a bunch of different stuff. It's, I actually really do like that trait. I think it is awesome. Yeah, there's and I mean there's I, two primes. There's a bunch of different super rares, right, yeah. all kinds of stuff. And I mean it's only going to get better as time goes on and we get more keywords. More and you know how fun that's going to be in Golden Age. Oh yeah, Fantastic for Golden Age stuff that'll be really cool. All right, so my favorite is also shifting focus. I really like shifting focus. I I wish we would get more shifting focus that isn't Electra. So. If we got, and I, I also want more shifting focus figures that'll work with the past ones, you know? So I would say uh, more Captain America ones because we had one for like each time he changed shields or whatever. Yeah. But I would also really like, you know, a mule near cap, a wolf Nomad. cap, stuff yeah. like that. Nomad. Yeah. I would love, there's so many crazy, wacky versions of Captain America well, out there many, that exist. How many Steve Rogers have we gotten that don't, you know, they don't shift into Captain... And I get Captain America was never yeah. like, hang on, let me change into old man, but uh, right. still, yeah, like, yeah, technically happened in the comics, so... But he, he was never like, hey, let me go back to World War II and grab my shield and then dress yeah. like that as well. Like, these are all... This is... That's why it's like the Man of Time or whatever the legend... I can't remember the trait is, but uh, yeah. So yeah, I would I would want more shifting focus for sure. Number two is best, worst, and favorite hero hooks characters that use or are usually put on the sideline. All right, Simeon. Calder already kind of said the best, but I put Firestorm, Black Vulcan, uh, and then just all the possessors. Um, 
anything that was able to give you like stat boosts and powers just by being on the sideline it's pretty good so my best personally i think it is jason wingard or, yeah. uh, the person that messes with sideline being that uh, he makes you put characters on your sideline that have pogs printed on their cards they're under 150 points at their highest and you got to bring those pogs in for free is pretty powerful when a lot of people maybe need a power at now you can only do it twice per game sure or whatever but when a lot of people need to use those pogs is like a power action to bring him in or it's a once per game bring in this pog whatever like i think that's a really really strong ability that's why yeah. i had to go with jason and jason for, wingard for less points he usually does a better job of generating pogs than the initial character yeah uh, what just as a side tangent, what uh, bystander do you find yourself bringing in more often? Is it like the Isaac bystanders, uh, Franklin Galactus, uh, the Machine Smith dupe, whatever he calls it? I think every game I played most recently, I brought in either. So every single game, I brought in one of the Isaac bystanders and uh, Franklin Galactus for sure. Whether, because I think potentially it is Isaac to give us, like, to honestly say which one is the best to bring in. Because Lord Guy, Gaia, Gia, whatever, gives you barrier. He's got close combat expert. He's no slouch. Yeah, he's, he's plasticity. He's high up and piece, stuff, yeah. right? Uh, one's running shot, pen blast with like, you know, a 10 for three isn't amazing, but like still, still it's a running shot, pen blast figure. Yeah. And then, and then um, Lord Chaos. Yeah, Chaos is awesome because he's just an 11 for four. Uh, and, and autonomous yeah autonomous and tk is thing, yeah. Auto- autonomous being 11 for four with autonomous is the biggest thing oh yeah and then of course uh franklin galactus is you know 12 for five pulse wave impervious which is just awesome so yeah uh, it's a tie between those i i obviously put uh dr fantastic on my team you know wasted a whole 110 points to make sure i could bring in <laughs> uh Frank galactus so yeah all right, All right, worst. Worst. Mean, worst thing. <laughs> I just line. put down most of the shifting focus figures. Um, whether yeah. it's you know the Star Trek, uh, whatever uh, Electra, there always ends up being like one that I just never end up putting on the field. Like you know, I've got all four, three or five or whatever, and I'm like, this one does the same as like basically these other two, but slightly worse. So just never use them like it's basically either aggressive or defensive and with like the exception of the doctor strange one who has like a boost ability a carry ability and a defense ability most of the time i just like only end up ever using two of the shifting focus so yeah i feel like most of the shifting I, focus figures are pretty bad i do agree with you um halfway i wrote specifically trouble or superman because superman is trash and belongs in the trash <laughs> Um, but also shifting focus, but specifically pool. If you use all of them, don't really need to. There are so many shifting focus Deadpool figures. You don't need to use all of them. Um, I think it's only bad if you use them all. Uh, obviously, there's two that you can straight up skip if you don't have, you know, either a X Men Heroes yeah. for Hire or whatever the Deadpool or X Factor team. X-Men, so you only need yeah, one of those, and that's only if are on one of those teams and if you aren't on any of those teams then you can number one skip that so there's three you don't need if you're not on any of those teams right the only the only ones you really need need are the healing one just whatever a rare prime the shooting one probably and then the x-force jumping around one like those are the ones you need need you know, maybe the close comp, probably the close combo one. I think it's the only one with Indom. But then there's the weird hypersonic rare, which is which is pretty cool. But like what I'm saying is they're all like good. They're so nichely good in their own ways that a lot of them you don't need. And your your sideline should never be almost all Deadpool because I think you, there's nine of them. Honestly, there's like seven or so. Like there's there's a ton. I know one tournament I was playing and I was like, oh, if I want all these Deadpool's, I actually need to only have like two high D cards. So I think Deadpool is one of the worst shifting focus just because a lot of them are redundant. You obviously just can't use two of them if you're not whatever, if you want to use one of them. So yeah. Anyways, also, like you said, Robert, kind of a product of his sideline where like there was, there's a lot of better sideline options back when uh, Deadpool was like King uh, when he was modern, I guess. 
Um, I'd have to revisit it now to see if like I'd actually fill the team out with it in Golden Age. Okay, there's eight. Excuse me, not nine. There's only eight. Uh, pardon me. All right. Simeon. Favorite sideline thing. Thing that uses the sideline. All right. Very cool. Thank my, you. my favorite sideline uh, currently is all the Fantastic Four stuff. So um, you can have like an Undying Wolverine who can grant flurry to Fantastic Four keyworded figures. You can have an Agent Venom that gives everyone adjacent shape change. Um, you can have a Ghost Rider with a uh, like a retaliation sort of power. Um, you could have Red Hulk. You could have... I mean, there's just... There's so many options. I feel like a Fantastic Four build, if you're just trying to build like a good one, automatically has to have the 65-point Rare Franklin automatically has to have the 50 point super rare thing um because then you've got a 19 invincible with defend and protected outwit or power cosmic basically for for all the characters that are next to those two or near those two um but then everything else is just like it's uh completely shiftable and there's so many options there's so many point values that you can swap in and out it's just a, a who's who of really good pieces Okay. I, I agree. The Fantastic Four thing, like I said, is awesome. Special shout out to the Frightful Four, which does it, but obviously they have less less people to do it with. But still, the Frightful Four is really cool. Uh, my favorite is, this should come as a surprise to no one, it's going to be Peggy Carter. Uh, when any time a Captain America dies, you just get to bring her in. Pretty sweet. And then Becky comes with her. So I really I really enjoy that Peggy Carter Ultra Chase. So I quite quite enjoy it. Also making every team I ever play with Captain America just cost a hundred dollars more. Yeah, minimum. Minimum, yeah. Well, I only I got her for a hundred, so I'm gonna say that. Yeah, right. Three is for newer players, what advice would you give them on how to use the sideline? Simeon. Uh my advice is literally just the rules. So uh limit three per hundred points of your build. So if you're building the three hundred, which is most common that's nine uh generated figures don't count towards your sideline so if you have like a new boss every week or you have uh whatever the batman animated series one was with the suited henchmen those figures don't count towards your sideline uh they're generated from outside the game and also to keep an eye out because they can give your opponents more points so um yeah a while back when the Thor, the Mighty Thor set was still legal. Uh, I played almost a mirror match against Edward Shelton, and he was winning quite handily until he used the Eric Masterson power to turn into Thunderstrike. Or, yeah, mm. I think it was Thunderstrike. He turned into him. He rolled poorly, put him on like his like third to last click, and then I just popped him. And got like an instant hundred and fifteen points. Yeah, went from went from like scoring potentially whatever Eric Masterson was, like 35, 40, whatever. Fifteen. To, yeah. Oh, was 15. he only fifteen? Okay. So yeah, I went from potentially scoring fifteen to actually scoring, you know, way more. So uh yeah, you just have to be real careful on like when you bring them in, because even though uh trouble alerts are added to your sideline for free, uh they're scored uh, on their lower dial. So most of them, I think, are 30. Robin being an exception, he's at 20. Uh, but yeah, you could potentially lose the sway of the game uh, if you call in like a good one, like you call in Black Vulcan, but then they have something that can just hit him and get 30 points all of a sudden. It's not a good, not a good thing for you. So keep that in mind. I was literally going to say the exact same thing. So I was like, I have like written down like it's three for every hundred points, blah, 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 blah. So like, yeah. All right, cool. We get it. We just skip. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, what old elements or mechanics do you want WizKids to bring back that involved the sideline? Uh, since I skipped my last one, I'll go first this time. Um, they've completely forgot that DC shifting focus exists. Um, <laughs> possible, yeah. uh, I would like, I would like them to bring DC shifting focus back specifically. Um, 
we keep talking about this every time we get asked like a dc set i want a dc lantern set with big boosters you know with the one colossal in it and the four standard figures that is my dream hero click set it should do shifting focus lanterns and the shifting focus trait for all of them should just be called emotional spectrum and that is guy gardner is a green lantern a red lantern a blue lantern a uh pink one star sapphire lantern a yellow lantern when he stole sinestro's ring right boom there's all your guy gardeners or now we go hal jordan right he is a whatever blue lantern orange lantern red lantern whatever that's what it should be we got all of them at one time well not even all of them because we are still missing certain versions of those main earth lanterns as different characters i think we should just make it a shifting focus mechanic that way i don't have to be like man i love hal jordan um but like I just never have the chance to play his like orange lantern, Hal Jordan. And now you do if you just make it a shifting focus. Whiz kids, you're welcome. Uh, that's because that's an amazing idea. Like if I do say so myself, I think shifting focus emotional spectrum uh, is like the best thing you guys could do for a DC lantern set. I think it's awesome. Uh, and you can steal that idea and not give me any credit for it as long as it exists because it's just that good. You're welcome. Oh, you don't they have to also- thank me. Simeon? Uh, Justice League Unlimited didn't get a title character again, I don't think. Oh, no title. So no title character. Or two in a row. This is rough. Missed it. Um, yeah. Uh, shifting focus. I think it's like anytime you reprint the same character and they're the same points or like similar points, but they're a different thing. Like all the Fantastic yeah. Four pieces, all the Teen Titans that had multiple like versions. Just you know, throw a shifting focus ability on there if they're if they match points and it makes sense. Why not? Um, then I, I also put the revert clicks. So um, there's a lot of characters that do this. It was mostly like the hulked out heroes that come to mind. Uh, the mighty characters from uh, Fear itself, the mighty and the worthy. I think they all like had some sort of reversion kind of click. Um, something like that where like you start off with like a more powerful version and then you revert to a normal version. I always thought that was fun, uh, especially if it's tied into like a stop click so that it's not just like a by chance, like you might someday pull this off thing. It's like more possible. And then I actually do like the possessor ability. Um, I didn't like the lantern batteries because there was just way too much going on to like you always had to like spend 10 minutes before the game learning the lantern battery before you oh, play sure. it yeah but emotional things yeah yeah possessors are just like do you have a combat stat that's uh, lower than the possessor bump it up by one pick a power off of the dial and they were costed fairly high so they were i feel fairly balanced and then um let's see i want them to keep doing the fantastic four uh Sue is the only one that like has like the trait, but I think it'd be cool if like Valeria had one for Future Foundation that worked similar, or maybe she could turn Future Foundation members into Fantastic Four members or something. Give them the keyword. So that'd be the other one. Okay. Uh, for new elements, uh, I think tag team for WWE would be awesome. There, it's basically shifting focus, but instead of coming in on a you know the same click number you would come in like full right which would be so dope like it'd be like a you can make that reverse cap if if it's too good you can make it twice per game or if you even think that's too good a once per game tag in type thing whatever you know which isn't really accurate for how tag teams work but i can understand how it's like oh i'm on last let me tag into you know kofi just tagged in biggie on full and biggie's gonna go crazy on you so like i get that that might be bit much i could for some see people, it working but uh, make it once per game i think it'd be fair i could see it so like to make it more thematic i could see it working like either top dial like on click one or when you're on like one of your blue clicks similar to how the wwe mm-hmm. power protects you from range okay. um do like that so like yeah if you ever watch a wwe tag match they it's usually you know there's there's some momentum going on like one team's usually winning at the beginning and it almost always ends up being like one tag team has beaten down uh, another tag team's like single guy, and like they've just been beating on him for a long time. And then like the crowd gets behind him, and he finally makes the tag. And then you've got a completely fresh team member that jumps in and starts beating down the other team. Um, so also, if they like came in with like the ability to activate their special 
Um, that'd be kind of cool. I, it's like a lot to ask for for a single ability, but it's, yeah, yeah, I, I still um, think that's cool. Like that is awesome. Call and help from the you know whatever verse, whether it's Spider Verse, uh, Venom Verse, X Verse, uh, Super Verse. I don't, I don't care. Only, only verses. I you think they them. should you do that it. as like a shifting focus thing. I think if Venom hits. Um, if Venom hits, like it should be like a trouble alert thing. So, like, let's say Venom hits a character, you roll, you call and help, you get it. You can pull somebody from your sideline that uh, makes sense. Like, you know, they have like the Venom keyword or the Venom name in their name somewhere or whatever. You pull yeah. them in from the sideline and you get one turn and then they go back to your sideline. That'd be cool. Yeah, that was basically what I wanted to. Uh to have happen i suppose so that is all of malcolm rush's questions thank you so much malcolm for uh sending them in my man that also brings us that's right us to the end of the show simeon anything you want to say before we end the show nope um uh, oh, all right don't have to say it yet. say it oh uh happy happy tears is that the the so, I hate everything we... about you. I meant say the other thing. <laughs> oh, okay. That's my thing uh, that I say. I well, meant say the thing that you say at the end of the episode. We, of course, are Dial H. And, of course, as always, we are brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find ooh -ah, cool stuff in stock every day. From your latest HeroClick singles to sealed products, you can get uh, pre-orders in as well. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Another news that we didn't get to is they're extending the orders for Galactus. It's going to be pushed back if you weren't part of the original orders, but uh, there is going to be a second wave that you can get in on. So check that out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.